presentation, I want you to give I want to give you an overview of the Stanford um, NLP kit, and particular the core NLP portion, the sort of bread and butter of this thing. So we're going to be looking at some documentation, and uh, we're going to be looking at some code uh, that I made available to you uh, as part of the distribution for the uh, uh, first milestone of the HRC project, and it's called NLP.java. Uh, that's a thing that um, that we're going to be looking at here in a little bit. But before we look at the code, uh, let's uh, like understand some of the stuff that uh, some of the components of this parser. So <clears throat> this parser um, it consists of several annotators and a pipeline. So the idea is you have some input text and you produce some annotations. The input can be a document containing many sentences or it can just be a, a string of one sentence. The idea is that uh, each sentence is sort of run through this pipeline consisting of a tokenizer which identifies the words. I don't know what this unit does. Uh, the point part of speech tagger, the lemmatizer, the named entity recognition unit, and uh, a dependency parser. So the concepts of these things we will introduce uh, later, especially the one of the dependency parser. So let's um, run through this thing very briefly. The objective uh, of the parser is to take the document, identify the sentences <clears throat> and the sub-sentences, and then uh, for each token to sort of like give us some intelligence if you, if you wish. So there might be a, 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 the, the word uh, of the token is born, the tag is, uh, I think this is verb phrase past, we'll look at that in a moment, the lemma, which is kind of the root form uh, of born, it's to bear, and then named entity recognition, and over here there's nothing. So let me say a few things. So you, you can probably have a pretty good idea of what it means to, to figure out what the sentences are and, and what the words are. So the tokenizer um, is probably pretty intuitive. So the parts of speech tagger, <clears throat> that's a key concept, uh, a key portion of this thing. This presentation I linked up in um, the, the programming assignment. So what you want to do is there's a little bit of an introduction over here. But most importantly, um, they have uh, this chart here of the, uh, the tag set, which is from the Pen Tree Bank, which is a very recognizable um, set of um, training data. So VBN is verb past participle, okay, eaten. So they even have an example. So it's, it's really nice. So see whether you can, you know, copy this thing or, or something like this, save it um, in one way or other. Uh, so I have a little bit of a cheat sheet of that. Um, so that's what, whoopsie, um, that's what uh, this portion does. And it's, uh, it's, it's very, very important. The lemmatizer uh, reduces a word to its root form. So for example, if we take um, run, runs, ran, and running, they all forms of the same lexeme, which is run. And so the benefit of that is, you know, we'll, again, we'll, we'll see about that in the slides, that if you have, um, if you want to compare two sentences, maybe there's a question, you know, um, did Einstein win the Nobel Prize? And maybe some document it sort of talks that Einstein won the Nobel Prize. So it'd be nice to not have to write uh, extra code to realize that win and won are sort of like based on the same root form. So um, that's one usage of this component. Uh, here's an example of a sentence or a partial sentence. Marie was born in Paris, and so here are some of the parts of speech um, that we're interested in. Named entities, uh, that's all like classifying things. You don't necessarily recognize that somebody won the Nobel Prize or that somebody is Einstein or something like this, but you realize that, oh, wait a minute, there's a person over here, uh, there's a location, uh, maybe there's a time, and so location and time enable to reason about space and time, of course. And uh, again, realizing that something is a person as opposed to a robot or, or something else uh, is, is very important. It helps us to do some, um, uh, some basic NLP processing. The dependency parse, uh, we'll discuss it in the slides, is a really interesting way of, of producing a parse tree. And so um, what we have over here is we have the verb phrase, which is kind of like in charge of the sentence. And we're sort of like saying, okay, well, who, who was born? Ah, it was Marie. Uh, it was in the past. Uh, and, and where? Um, oh, uh, in Paris. Okay, so we can add many, many other things to it. But uh, so notice that the root of this 
structure is born and that makes a lot of sense. Now this is going to help us out with our robot because a lot of times when we communicate with the robot we will probably ask it to do certain things and those are typically verbs uh, or verb phrases. And so we'd sort of like look at this root word, identify what it is and then look at other things that we look for other things that, that we need to know about. Co-reference, I, I do not have that enabled right now. You can easily enable that. Just add that as, as one of the annotations. We don't need it right now, not for the initial part of our HRC project. But here's the idea. Marie was born in Paris. And then the next sentence says, she loves uh, the museums. And so who's she, right? Um, so this parser identifies Marie as she. So looking at the prior sentence, uh, uh, dereferencing this pronoun. So that, those are some are some of the basic components. Again, the theory we'll talk about uh, in the slides. All right, so let's have a look at the code here then. Again, it's very, very rudimentary. Uh, there are many other annotators, and, and the, uh, the code that I'm showing you just so like just some very, very basic stuff. So let's see what's going on. So over here, we have the annotators, right? We have this, you don't need to know too much about these things, but uh, we talk about properties. We talk about the annotators, we generate the pipeline. Here is some input text that is hard code. Um, we create this new document uh, and uh, we'll put the, uh, um, the, we create a new annotation. Um, but over here is where we actually run uh, the annotators. So here is where we actually annotate this, this document. Over here we just initialize it. The output is <clears throat> of running the annotators uh, are sentences. And so as you can tell, it's a list of sentences. And <clears throat> what we want to do then is we want to process those sentences. Again, initially, you probably only have one sentence that you need to process. Um, <clears throat> so what I do then is um, I grab a sentence that I have over here and uh, <clears throat> I create uh, or I tease out the semantic graph. And that is uh, the key class that you need to be familiar with. So again, I'll link this thing up in the project as well as in, um, uh, in the lecture slides or in the in day 16 um, outline. So there are many, many methods. Uh, I'll show you some of them here in a moment. You can get edges based on words. Um, <clears throat> you can get um, parent lists. Somewhere you can get siblings, you can get roots, you can get the first root. <clears throat> um, just you can ask whether something has a, ch a child. You can print this thing nicely. So um, that's something that you want to look at. Notice that they talk about indexed words. You probably want to look at that. And uh, I think somewhere where they also talk about grammatical relation. Let me see if I can find that. Well, I'll see that in the, in the demo code. So what I did is I just simply linked it up um, without frames so I can actually reference to this class. Um, if you click on frames, you see all the other uh, portions of the uh, Stanford Core NLP kit. All right, so let's um, now go back to the code. Um, what I have over here is I get that tag, right? The POS um, tag. Um, I uh, oh, sorry, I a little bit ahead of my myself. Um, I get the root of the of the graph of the semantic graph. So I get the first root in case there's more than one. Uh, typically, the first root is the one that we're interested in, um, and so that's an indexed word, and I get the tag. Of it and then uh, the tag is a string and we have seen the tags a moment ago and, and here are the tags that I'm interested in uh, for this very very simple hello world uh, demo code uh, verb phrase noun phrase and determiner and uh, and uh, the default is just simply sorry couldn't identify the sentence structure which is in, my, in this particular example things that we're not interested in and so what I do is um, I, I pass in the uh, the semantic graph uh, and the root word um, that that I identified um, to three different procedures that I wrote: uh, process verb phrase, process noun phrase, process determiner. Um, and so the outcome of of my processing is that oh wait a minute, there's an action that we want to do which is called pickup, 
uh, there's a type of object block and then the identity of the object is that okay it's the determiner um, over here I uh, I process determiner uh, again just nothing really interesting over here except you know you, you notice that index word is used quite a bit uh, grammatical relationship is quite a bit used quite a bit I look at child pairs pairs um, over here I process a noun phrase and over here I process a verb phrase so um, very rudimentary processing but uh, for a demo code it does the trick so notice that uh, you know you totally need to look a little bit at the documentation so like look for um, to be able to find out the text so I have original text there's to lowercase um, lots of interesting things before uh, we we move on let me sort of like give you a quick view behind the scenes here based on um, this run information in red so notice that we add some token uh, sorry, sorry annotators over here but this is kind of interesting notice the pause tagger uh, it talks about models over here so whenever it talks about models that means uh, it's a neural network a trained neural network so that do part of speech identification with a trained neural network um, named entity recognition same thing the let's see what else they have yeah more named entity recognition uh, here's a dependency parser uh, they have some sort of model that they use for it and then down here is the actual dependent dependency parser proper which does the parsing I want to say something very briefly about the benefits of using neural networks here and then let's sort of like focus on the part of speech tagger so so look at think about the word bark bark um, it has at least two meanings one of them is tree bark right uh, the skin of the tree if you wish and the other one is a dog barking um, <clears throat> so if we have the word bark which one is it going to be now in a in a parser before neural networks, um, you would have a dictionary, and you would say, so "I have an entry for bark." And uh, if you only have one, that would be a pretty poor dictionary. But if you have two, well, you kind of have to decide which one to pick, right? Now there are ways around this thing. Many times, um, parsers produce more than one parse tree, and then they so have some sort of heuristics. You remember those from A star um, to pick the best uh, parse tree. What this thing does over here. Um, it uses a model, a trained model to sort of like pick out based on context um, what would be the good, what would be a, a good uh, POS tag. So if we have um, the uh, forester investigated the tree bark uh, for insects, um, then you know there's forester uh, tree, and so it probably picked bark the the noun. But if you have, uh, there was a, um, let's see, dogs bark, um, dogs bark at night. Um, so you, you sort of like see that, oh, wait a minute, um, there's this thing called dog in front of it. So we probably have um, the, the activity or the verb uh, bark here as the root. So that's where these things come in really handy. Uh, again, they've been trained, as you know by now, on bazillion pieces of data maybe not bazillions but many many so there you have it a quick run through so again this nlp.java code is something I threw in uh, what you need to do is you need to mo modify the robot.java code alrighty folks uh, have fun with this project um, I'll talk to you later bye